going on everybody? It's Richard Kober, here the Book Call Nerd. It is once again springtime, and it is once again release notes time. Let's jump into it. Oh, not these things again. Get out of here! Shoot! Shoot! Got the worst freaking pest control guy. So, first on these notes, under the accounting section, we have the enhanced project financial screen. And this one is only going to be relevant to those of you out there using project tracking slash budget versus actuals. So largely new construction and some commercial companies. So previously the project financial summary section had always been in a table style format. And while it showed high level financial details like the contract summary, your expenses, your costs to complete, there were still some key insights missing and the data that was there wasn't particularly easy to digest. So now the project financial summary screen has been redesigned with visual charts and more data points. Next, we have a couple of improvements for those of you using Intact. So first of all, restocking fees are now synced over to Intact, whereas previously they weren't. So before, whenever you exported vendor returns and credits to Intact, any restocking fees weren't included which obviously could cause financial discrepancies, so now that issue is solved. Also, Service Titan transactions can now be mapped to specific transaction definitions within Intact. So previously, Service Titan transactions were synced as specific transaction definitions, which did not allow any flexibility, which basically meant that if the transaction definition was being used by another integration or was assigned to a different Intact account entirely, that was problematic. That couldn't be used for the Service Titan to Intact integration. But now that you can map Service Titan transactions to specific transaction definitions within Intact, that is no longer an issue. All right, next we have a y'all item. Adaptive capacity is now generally available. So adaptive capacity is the new and improved successor to adjustable capacity planning, if you're familiar with that. But adaptive capacity, for one, solves a bunch of problems that existed with adjustable capacity planning, but it also introduces strategic rules, which allows for a lot more automation within capacity planning. So if your CSRs or dispatchers are currently manually flipping through the dispatch board to try and find openings where they can place a call, that is the least efficient way to possibly do that. There are multiple other options and adaptive capacity is one of them. Now I'm not gonna dive too deep into the details of adaptive capacity because I did already give it its own separate video and I'm releasing that video alongside this one so I'll put a link to it at the end screen of this video. Okay, next I'm keeping the y'all hat on. You can now control bulk technician shift deletions with a new permission. So you can now prevent unauthorized or accidental bulk deletions by managing the new allow bulk deletion of technician shifts permission under edit technician shifts. So previously, any employee with edit permission could remove multiple technician shifts at once in bulk, which I'm assuming caused some, some hijinks, some, some silly little situations because multiple of you did request this new permission. And so here it is. Howdy y'all. Okay, next under fixes, Canadian postal codes are now saved correctly in the zones dropdown. So previously, postal codes were automatically converted into a continuous six character format, which is not typically how Canadian postal codes are formatted. So now Canadian postal codes can be properly entered into that field spaces and all. Okay, next under enterprise hub, you can now push and pull reports and dashboards between enterprise hub and single tenant accounts. So previously reports and dashboards had to be pushed from Enterprise Hub to individual tenants. It couldn't go the other direction, which meant that if there was a particular report or dashboard in a single tenant that you wanted to have in Enterprise Hub to redistribute, you'd have to recreate it in Enterprise Hub. But now there is a new permission based feature which allows reports and dashboards to be automatically transferred between single tenant accounts and Enterprise Hub. Meaning now not only can you push data from Enterprise Hub into tenants, but you can also pull data from tenants into Enterprise Hub. Next, you can now manage configurations across multiple tenants with the centralized feature gate manager in Enterprise Hub. So before enterprise businesses had to configure feature gates one tenant at a time, but now there's a tool within Enterprise Hub that lets you bulk change those configurations across multiple tenants. And under improvements for Enterprise Hub, we now have centralized GL account management in the centralized price book. So if you manage multiple locations, you can now pull default GL accounts from a designated source tenant, ensuring consistency across all locations. All right, next under equipment, we have a redesigned equipment page. So previously finding and updating equipment details required navigating multiple screens. So this is what the page in question used to look like, but now here's what we're working with. So I'm on a location page here. And if I come down to the equipment section, everything looks as expected, but this particular location has a lot of equipment on it. So let's click this button to view all equipment. 
And now here's where things look a little bit different. So we now have a more familiar table format. We've got this toggle switch for edit mode up here, just like in the price book. You've also got a search bar up here and filters available to us as well. And if we want even more details about a particular piece of equipment, we can click into one and we'll get this fly out here where we can see an overview of details, any attached documents, any work history associated with this piece of equipment, as well as any associated service agreements if we are using commercial service agreements. So overall, this design is just a little bit more user-friendly and more cohesive with the rest of service type. Okay, next under financing, we have the second look waterfall by turns integrated within Service Titan. So this is a pretty cool feature that will help you get your financing approval ratings up. Basically with this enabled, when a customer applies for a first look lender and they get denied, that application just automatically waterfalls down into second look options. So if the first look lender denies them, then this integration automatically evaluates offers across various second look lenders. That way they can still end up getting approved for financing without having to actually go through a separate application process. Okay, next under reporting, another y'all item. The reporting dictionary is now generally available. So we talked about this feature in the previous release notes when it was going into early access. This is the feature that allows you to really quickly figure out which reporting template the KPI that you're interested in lives inside of. So there's a couple of places to access this. The first is from the reporting page under this templates library tab. Here we have a breakdown of all of the report templates. And in here we can see a description of the report template or data set, as well as all of the individual data points that live within this data set. And we can click on any one of them to get a more detailed definition. And we also have this tool to search for data fields, which is extremely useful because this tool will tell us exactly where our KPI lives and we don't even need to know exactly what the KPI is called in Service Titan. For example, let's say I wanted to know the number of preventative maintenances sold. For me and my company, I call those PMs sold, but that KPI doesn't actually exist in Service Titan. It's called membership sold. But let's search for it anyway. And I see that membership sold is my first result with a 100% match. And it's telling me right here that that KPI lives in the technician performance data set. So now I know exactly which data set I need to use and I can even just click on that and click create report right here to go ahead and get rolling with that. Now, if I were just creating a new report, I will also have a shortcut here to access that search tool. So that's the other place where I could access it from. Really useful tool, finding the right KPI used to be a real struggle and this tool pretty much eliminates that struggle. Howdy y'all. All right, next under search, you can now perform key actions directly within the global search results. So now when searching, you can just select an icon next to a search result to perform various actions such as collecting and applying payments, printing and emailing invoices, and editing jobs. Next, we have the new Service Titan app marketplace. So the app marketplace is a centralized location where you can go and find apps that integrate with Service Titan. You'll access the marketplace by clicking on this little shop storefront icon in the upper right hand corner. Okay, next under supply chain, you can now assign the correct vendor right when you are adding catalog items to your price book. So when you're adding or mapping items from a vendor's product catalog, you can now choose a primary vendor or set vendors to active. Previously, Service Titan would just link items to a default replenishment vendor, and then you would have to go in later and manually update that. Next, we have a new resupply procurement integration. So you can now automatically sync materials and equipment, receive real-time customer-specific pricing, and send electronic purchase orders to resupply. Next, under Titan Advisor, the 2024 benchmark report is now available. So the benchmark report comes out every year. It shows you how your business did in the particular year compared to similar businesses like yours. It's a pretty insightful report to see the way things are trending. You can download it by going into Titan Advisor and then clicking the link below your Titan score. Next under Dispatch Pro, Dispatch Assist is now generally available. Again, we talked about this one in the last release notes when it was going into early access. This is the optional feature where you can have Dispatch Pro make dispatching suggestions, which you can either accept or reject versus just letting it do its thing. And of course, if you prefer full automation, that is still an option as well. If you're looking for the full details on how to turn that on, check out the previous release notes video. Next under Dispatch Pro Improvements, you can now enable historical technician assignments in Dispatch Pro to improve job continuity and customer satisfaction. I like this feature a lot. I think this really rounds out 
the Dispatch Pro feature set. So you can now tell Dispatch Pro when a customer prefers a certain technician. So previously, Dispatch Pro didn't consider past technician assignments when scheduling jobs, which could be problematic because a lot of companies prefer to send the same technician whenever possible to just maintain continuity and have somebody there who kind of knows the history. Plus, sometimes technicians build relationships with specific customers and then those customers want that specific technician. So now you can configure your Dispatch Pro settings to consider prioritizing assigning technicians who have worked at that location before. So that setting is found, of course, under your Dispatch Pro settings under the Technician Settings tab, and it is setting number 4.3 under that tab and you're able to toggle this setting per business unit. Next, under Marketing Pro Ads, we have a new Meta Ads integration. So Marketing Pro can now automatically pull ad costs, assign jobs to campaigns, and send conversion signals to Meta, similar to what it can already do with the Google Ads integration. This helps optimize your ad performance and ensures accurate reporting for better marketing decisions. Next, under Scheduling Pro, you can now upload a logo to personalize your scheduler. So previously, as far as branding goes, Scheduling Pro only allowed for certain color themes and text customizations. But now you can also upload a logo, customize the header color, and choose to display or hide your brand name in the welcome page. Your logo will also appear on the Reserve with Google booking page. Next, you can now customize scheduling rules with new tag options, rule conditions, and branding controls. So basically, it is now going to be possible to assign tags to Scheduling Pro jobs based on whether the customer or locations are new or existing. Rules will also have new options for does not equal and contains, which will make assigning business units, campaigns, and tags more flexible. It'll also be possible to customize the prompt you provide to users in the additional details section. And you'll also be able to edit brand names for your scheduler without having to create a new brand altogether. Okay, next under early access, the new and improved left side navigation bar is now in early access. So I've been playing around with this for a little while. You probably saw it in my previous screen recordings. So if you were wondering, this is what that is. This layout is a bit more space efficient, especially now with our search bar up here and considering that screens are mostly widescreen these days. So by moving the navigation bar to the side, we're using the real estate where we actually have it most available. The side navigation bar also allows for navigating directly to sub pages. So if I hover over a page that has sub pages, I can just jump directly to that sub page versus clicking into the page and then clicking into the sub page. And if you want more details, you can click this button down here to expand it out and then you can kind of break out those pages into their sub pages like, a, like an expansion tree versus having to hover over it. But of course that layout takes up more space, so if you don't want that, you can always collapse it back down. While this layout does take a little bit of getting used to, my experience was that it wasn't really that big of an adjustment. And it does certainly free up some vertical real estate, especially again with that search bar that we have up here now. So if this is something that you would like to go ahead and try out early and provide feedback before it becomes generally available, now's the time. All right, next, Contact Center Pro is now in early access. So Contact Center Pro was announced at Pantheon, it's Service Titan's new call center and telephony solution. And it is built to support both multi-location and single location businesses. So it centralizes customer communications within a single place and it also has superior enterprise grade uptime, meaning basically it is extremely reliable. It also features Titan intelligence powered features like virtual agents and sentiment analysis. It's a pretty cool feature set. I will be making a separate video on it eventually. But if this is something you're really interested in, it is now available for early access. Next, the newly redesigned customer portal is now available for early access. So the new customer portal has features like real-time invoice collection, estimate approvals, and a unified portal for service history and equipment data. And it also supports service agreements and visibility into upcoming work in addition to that historical data. Again, it's not fully out with this release, but it is going into early access. If you are interested in participating in that early access program, there is a particular form to fill out for this one, which I'll put in the description box down below. Next, Field Assist is now available in early access. So Field Assist is an AI assistant for technicians in the mobile app. Techs will be able to use it to ask questions about information that lives in Service Titan. And they'll also eventually be able to use it for troubleshooting, like the actual wrench turning part of the job as well. But for now, in this early access version, it's only going to be offering information that lives in Service Titan. For example, a technician could ask what happened at this location before. This one also has a form to fill out if you're interested in participating in the early access, which I'll also put in the description box down below. And the new Service Titan Field mobile app is now in limited release. So hopefully you know this by now. I've been trying to scream it from the rooftops, but every time I bring it up, somebody's like, what, what are you talking about? There is a brand new mobile app on the way. And I don't want anybody acting surprised, right? Because we've been talking about it for years now. You'll eventually have to transition to a new version of the app. I don't know when, 
It's not going to be everybody all at once, and it's not going to be like, hey, this is the exact date, and everybody just, you, boom, we're done with the old one. It'll be a transition, but it will happen. Sometimes change happens, and sometimes change is good. And this is one of those times. Have you used Have you used the, the current app recently? It's time. It's, it's just, it's time. So the new version of the app, it is not out yet, but it is in limited release, which means certain qualified customers will have access to it if they want. The new app is cleaner, nicer, and more modern, but it isn't done yet, so it doesn't have every single feature that the old app has. And so whether or not you're quote unquote qualified for the limited release depends on which features you're using. Again, if you're interested in this, I'll put a link in the description where you can join the waitlist. Okay, next, still under early access, but under reporting. I never quite know to do this when it's early access, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go ahead and put the hat on. It just feels wrong to talk about this without the hat on. You can now, in early access, combine data fields from multiple report templates into one with multi-template reports. So we talked about this in the previous release notes when it was coming out for Enterprise Hub specifically and now it is in early access for everybody else. This has been the most common complaint when it comes to reporting for forever. Sometimes you want multiple KPIs within a single report, but one KPI lives in one data set and one KPI lives in a different data set, so you can't really see them at the same time. But with multi-template reports, you can. Now, same disclaimers apply here that we talked about in the previous release notes when it was coming out for Enterprise Hub. So not every report template can join with every other report template. There has to be some common KPI between them so that they can map together. Also to start, you can only combine two templates into one report. You can't go beyond that yet. Again, if you're interested in joining the waitlist for this one, I will put a link in the description box down below. Anyways, that's all I got for today. Be sure to hit like if you like this video and found it valuable. Be sure to subscribe to Service Titan's YouTube channel if you haven't done that already. Hit that bell icon so that YouTube notifies you anytime we upload a new video. And if you enjoy these videos and blue collar nerd content in general, the greatest thing you can do to help me out is to just leave a comment saying so. I don't care if you said the same thing the past three videos in a row, it's, it's great, I'll take it, it helps me. Appreciate it. Peace.